At this point, you know that we record financial statement amounts at their historical cost. In other words, what we paid for them. And for the most part, we stick with that historical cost. There are some very few instances where we might actually adjust things to fair market value where we would increase them. Um, but those are rare instances that we'll talk about in another session. And there actually are occasions where we would record an impairment to inventory. In other words, uh, an impairment to an asset where we reduce the carrying amount of that asset on the balance sheet. And that is a deviation from the historical cost principle, but it upholds the principle of conservatism. And if market conditions have indicated that maybe an item of inventory has lost some worth, we may have an argument for impairing or writing down that inventory on the balance sheet. Let's take a look at this equestrian supply company. Um, you might recall this. I mean, we, we used this very illustration when we looked at periodic and perpetual inventory. And we have this company with uh, inventory right now being reported at the end of December, $68,560. And here's our inventory listing. I mean, we actually counted up everything that we have on hand. Uh, number of items times the cost per item equals the extended total cost, and that matches up to the $68,560. But what if the value of inventory declines? What if market conditions make some of these items less desirable? What if they become damaged? What if they become outdated? What if they become obsolete? Well, what we get to is this, this concept that we have either something called lower of cost or market, which for a lot of years in financial accounting, that's the term we used. We're going to va value the inventory at the lower of either its cost or its market value. And if I were giving you this discussion a few years ago, we could have stopped there. We could have said it's either the lower of the cost or the market value. Um, but then uh, the Financial Accounting Standards Board was nice enough to say, you know what, for, uh, you know, for some types of inventory valuation methods that we'll talk about at a later date, um, uh, we have this th concept called lower of cost or net realizable value. Uh, that's what the NRV stands for. Basically, net realizable value is your selling price minus any cost to complete and dispose of the inventory. So maybe selling price minus completion cost minus a sales commission or some kind of shipping expense or something like that. Um, but the takeaway is this. Um, we can explore those nuances when you take intermediate accounting. Okay? For purposes of this discussion in a principles of financial accounting class, let's just treat the market value and the net realizable value as simply the value right now. Okay? Because I want to illustrate this concept of conservatism and what will happen if we do have to impair the inventory on our balance sheet, which we're going to have to do. You're going to see in a minute, this inventory is going to decrease from 68,000 down to 64,000 and some change because one of these items has an impairment indicated. So yeah, taking that, uh, that nuance of market value versus net realizable value, let's take that uh, you know, out of the picture. And let's just say that we've determined item value. Look what's happening here. Here's our inventory listing. These are the same quantities that we saw a few minutes ago. They're, you know, that's a repeat right there. And this is item cost. So this is our historical cost. This is what we paid for each of these items. And what we want to do is on an item by item basis, we want to see, is there an impairment indicated? These boots, we paid $60 a pair. Obviously, we'll sell them to our customers at a markup, but our cost was 60. Right now, based on market conditions, the replacement value, what it would cost to replace this, or the net realizable value, the value is $65. Uh, well, lower of cost or market, the cost is lower. Go to the saddle. Our cost is $1,200. Market value or net realizable value is $1,300. The cost is still lower. And the same is going to be true for the hats, the blankets, and the bridles. I kept this a simple example, but let's say that the demand for jump sets has decreased. And because of market conditions, even though we paid $7,000 to purchase these four jump sets, right now the value per jump set is $6,000. 
either the market value or that net realizable value depending upon which is applicable. But the takeaway is this, there's an impairment indicated because the lower of cost or market, the lower of cost or the value is actually the value. So is there an impairment indicated? Absolutely. The impairment is $1,000 per item. We have four of these in our inventory. That means we're going to have a $4,000 adjustment that we need to record. And this is not a popular adjustment because let's take a look at the journal entry. Here are the debits and credits. Um, the part I would start with is inventory account. We're going to make a credit entry to inventory. Remember that when you make a credit entry to an asset, the balance goes down. And that's exactly what's going to happen. The net assets of this company are going to decrease by $4,000. That's not a popular thing to do. Okay, management's not going to like this. And then we're going to record an expense. Now, if, if the dollar amount is not highly material, we might just include that in cost of goods sold. We'll certainly have some disclosure that we'll talk about in the financial statement notes, but we could record this expense as cost of goods sold. If it was material, if it really is going to stand out, we might actually record this on a separate uh, line item, uh, separate from cost of goods sold, so that we're transparent about the magnitude of this reduction. But look at the effect of inventory impairment. What are we doing? We reduce the value of, um, I should say, we reduce the carrying amount, the amount of inventory on our balance sheet by $4,000. And the corresponding side of this is extra expenses that reduce net income. Ultimately, we reduce retained earnings, reduces stockholders' equity. So this is not a popular thing to do, but it is conservatism in practice. It also is the matching principle because not only are we reporting inventory at the amount that is basically realistic. We've measured this probable sustained loss right now, but we've also measured the impairment expense in the period where that impairment occurred. Inventory impairment. It's unpopular, but it is conservatism in practice. It is the matching principle. Look at our friends at Lululemon. We've been taking a look at their financial performance. Well, a few years prior to what I've shown you uh, as we looked at inventory and whatnot, they had a little situation in June of 2013 uh, they recorded a $17.5 million impairment of their inventory balance, which you know at this point translated to a $17.5 million reduction in reported earnings because their black Luan pants represented 17% approximately of their inventory. They had to recall these pants. There was a technical defect in the fabric, and these yoga pants, when stretched, became transparent which is kind of a problem because people generally don't like see-through clothing. So Lululemon recalled the pants and look what happened to their stock price. Stock price right here just before the recall was $82.28. June 11, which would be kind of right in here, dropped to $67.85. And then a day later on June 12, we're all the way down to $64.30. So you can see, as soon as Lululemon made this announcement and in the investing public realized that there would be an impairment of the inventory amounts and a corresponding adjustment in, uh, in the operational results of the company, you can see exactly what the markets did in response. That stock price dropped precipitously.